Hello and welcome to the devotion for Tuesday, December the 11th, entitled, The Gift of the Spirit. Now, we know that when Christ came, he came so that he could identify with us. As we saw in scripture, it said he had to become like his brothers in every way so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest. But he also came to deal with the sin problem that separated us from an unbroken relationship with God. And he said the thing that he desired to do was to make it possible for us to have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Acts 2, 38 and 39, we read these words. Peter replied, be bapt- Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And the work of the Holy Spirit is to provide us with the same tools that Jesus had access to through the work of the Spirit when he had human flesh. And what are those? A couple of the major gifts we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. It says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In other words, God empowers us to do things that bless the community of faith. To one is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge. Now, knowledge is an understanding of what is available. Wisdom is the right application of that knowledge. He says, to another, faith, the ability to believe, even those things that are difficult, and to walk them out. To another, gifts of healing, obviously, uh, spiritual and physical healing that we need in our life. To another, miraculous powers, the ability to see the things that Jesus did, where people's lives are radically touched, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and also the distinguishing between spirits, whether it's something that is coming from the heart and the presence of God, or it's something that is not. And then to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. Now, this can be languages to be able to communicate as they did on the day of Pentecost. It can be uh, what the scriptures refer to as an unknown language that people pray in when they are praying, uh, expecting that they are praying exactly what God wants them to pray not hindered by their understanding getting in the way. And then to still another interpretation of tongues, an understanding of of a prayer uh, that is uh, prayed in a different language and yet having a knowledge of that. All of these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. But as we read in Scripture, Paul says we need to eagerly desire these gifts. I mean, if God is willing to, wanting to, he said this is for you, for your children, for those afar off, for everyone the Lord our God calls, we need to be, as Paul said, eager to receive these gifts, to be looking for them. And this list of these nine is not exhaustive. There's also the gift of administration. There's a prophet, uh, teacher, evangelist. We also see a gift of hospitality. We see uh, just all kind of gifts of leadership, administration. There are many things that God will empower us to do, and we need to look for him to give us the ability to do everything that he puts in our heart. He said that the Holy Spirit is there to empower us to that. It is a gift. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to deserve it. He says, I want to do this work in your life. I want to give you the ability through the work of the Holy Spirit for you to do the things that you could not do without me. I want to give you this incredible gift. And then I want that gift to be used for the common good, for you to be able to use it as a tool to bless others, to uh, share the kingdom of God, to encourage, to watch over. So let's pray. Father, We realize these gifts are available to us. You gave your life when you came and walked the earth so that we could have our sin issue dealt with. And the result of that is that we could have the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life and have gifts that are supernatural, active in our daily lives. And you said that we are to eagerly desire those spiritual gifts. So Lord, we ask that you would open our understanding, that we would begin to look for you to supernaturally give us wisdom, 
to give us knowledge, to give us the faith to trust you, to walk in the places we need to, that, Lord, we will see miracles, we will see healing, that, Lord, you will fill our mouth, whether it's with a word of wisdom or knowledge or revelation or a prophecy or a tongue, Lord, that we would just be eager for you to live your life through us. You said the Holy Spirit takes from what is yours and reveals it to us, makes it known to us, speaks it through us, lives it through us. So, Lord, we eagerly desire it. We have to know it's available. And now that we do, Lord, we need to look to take those small steps of faithful obedience to let you give us wisdom, knowledge, faith, uh, uh, that we would pray for miracles, that we would look for your supernatural presence in our lives. Lord, do that in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once we discover we have a gift waiting on us, I'd encourage you to go seek it. Trust that God's going to work in these ways in your life. And then take those small steps of obedience to let him do it. And I'll see you tomorrow.